Well, um, <laughs> it might have been, except that the um, what we forget too is that the investment in new weapons for the Canadian forces, so they can be up to speed in, in Afghanistan, will in fact be entirely wasted, because a couple of years in the Afghan climate will do to your car <laughs> what uh, either. Uh, Sending it to Afghanistan will do, in other words, put it out of the way and destroy it through the sand. I mean, Afghanistan is simply sand mixed with air. That's what you breathe and that's what your car breathes, and they will not be coming back in a useful form. Although the government's plan, uh, as explained through the previous minister, who barely understood anything, was uh, that this would be the equipment for the Canadian Force for the next 50 years. And the same so said by Rumsfeld for the Americans. Um, instead, they found their equipment doesn't work very well in terms of protecting its, its inhabitants from uh, uh, even the cheapest improvised uh, explosives, mm -hmm. and it wears out. Another thing we haven't noticed wears out is people. Um, I'm not a psychologist. I've spent a certain amount of time looking at something that used to be called shell shock. It's been called battle exhaustion in the Second World War is now called operational stress disorder. You should learn that term because OSD, as it's now termed, gets rid of the notion that some terrible shock, I mean that screen fell off the wall, we were all, uh, uh, it doesn't happen like that. You wear out. Your, uh, a man named Lord Moran, who was Churchill's doctor, described it best in a book on courage. Um, he argued on the basis of experience of medical officer in the British Battalion in the First World War that all of us, even the most cowardly, are endowed with a bit of courage. Some people have large chunks of it. It wears out. And after you've won the Victoria Cross, there's probably very little of it left. And if you've gone out on patrol outside the wire in Kandahar, you can do it six, eight, fifteen times. But when you get to sixteen or twenty, you're getting over it. And when you go back for your second and third tours, you are very near the edge of your limit. So the battle exhaustion numbers, or the OSD numbers in the Canadian Forces, get higher and higher. And they affect the more senior, the more responsible, the more uh, influential non-commissioned officers and officers. And this is a, a kind of wear out that we don't think about in, in working terms. Uh, you know, we're all supposed to get older, but uh, wiser and fitter, and, and you can, but not from this particular requirement. And the signs of it are apparent in the Princess Patricia's, there are signs mm -hmm. of it in the RCR, and if the Van Dues go back again, they will share it. And so do the engineers and the RCDs and the rest of the people we don't even think about going. And so the Americans are going to suffer the same thing, and mm -hmm. have been. And they are, for all sorts of ideological reasons, very reluctant to deal with it. Americans don't have Medicare, and they don't really believe in health care as a, as a right or as a provision that's necessary. You can buy it with insurance if you can get the insurance company silly enough to, to run a uh, policy. This is an acute problem for the U.S. military and our military. And probably the British, too, are feeling it from Iraq. So if you want to add that expense in, the maintenance on in psychiatric treatment of a significant portion of your veterans, get ready. Are you on the wall?